let us continue our discussion on overview of experimental stress analysis. We will move on to the next experimental technique. We have already seen that Moire is what we have uh, used for finding out the displacement information and we will see what Moire is all about. And what I am interested to show here is Moire has an effect of magnifying the displacements. That is the way I am going to look at it. And what you have here is in the case of uh, metal forming processes, what they have is they have a billet and they will put a grid. You can see the grid here, these are known as grid methods. And what I have is when I do the metal forming operation, I do a large plastic deformation. So, I am really talking of a very high value of strain. And in this, you do not require fine measurements, even these grids deform like this. So, you, you get very valuable information on the nature of strain field from this. So, you have very large plastic deformation and for all those metal processing application, people use the grid method, because that itself is sufficient to give you some information. And you could see here, I have the grid initially and I have the final grid so much deformed. So, I can really make some kind of quantitative information from this. And in fact, uh, the credit for this uh, goes to Professor P. Venugopal of the manufacturing uh, the materials and ma metallurgical engineering department IIT Madras. And what you have seen is a gudgeon pin, that is what uh, this uh, information shows. And so, people have always looked at, they have put a grid, they have always wanted how to go and find out very small deformation. This is for large deformation, it is ok. Now, what people did is, people also to simplify strain measurement, what you can do is, uh, you can have a not only the grid, in the grid you also put a circle. I will show you a magnified view and then you see the animation for uh, 2, 3 times. You will have an appreciation, I have a circle, I have, have a circles marked and they become ellipses, circles marked become ellipses. Can you see that? So, what you find is you also find the stretch direction, you also find the stretch direction and by looking at the change in the geometry of the circle, you will also be able to find out some information about the major strain axis, minor strain axis and so on and so forth. So, you are able to from the grid, if you also put a circle, it is advantageous. So, I have a circle that gets deformed to an ellipse. And now, what I am going to do is, people felt that instead of just using a one grid, if I have more than one grid, it makes it little more comfortable. That is how Moire started developing. And what you find here is, I have a specimen, on the specimen I have a grid and I view it through another grid like this. And what you find here is, I have only stretched it slightly, but I see a play of fringes on the specimen. I am able to see the fringes, they are horizontal fringes. So, what we have found is, people have used initially grids, then they improvised it and put within the grid a circle, you get little more information from the deformed picture of the grid. Then they realized that if I put not one grid, but I put one grid on the specimen and view it by another grid, I get little more information. And somebody asked me, what is the grating? in one of the classes where we said what Moire gives you directly. And what you have here is, this is the grating, this is the grating here and this is nothing but horizontal uh, bars here. And when I put another grating which is very similar, you see beautiful fringes, where I rotate them relatively. So, what you have here is, it is by mechanical interference you see these fringes. 
Moire is not an optical interferometry technique, it is a mechanical interference of the grids that is what you get it. So, I get this when I rotate it relative to the other, I also get it when I translate it with respect to the other. Okay. So, the idea here is I get these nice patterns and I can interpret it appropriately if I conduct the experiment very carefully. Okay. Here I have shown very coarse grids. Suppose I have uh, uh, fine grids. Suppose I have fine grids. I have you are you are not able to see the grid lines at all, and the fringes are lot more smoother. The fringes are lot more smoother if I have these uh, grids finer and finer. Okay, and here I am not making any stress analysis. I am only showing you mechanical interference of two grid patterns and the grid patterns can be anything and I have this and I have a I have a radial lines and when I put the radial lines so beautiful maybe in Tata salt I think uh, they have this as the pattern for uh, uh, on that uh, cover. So, in uh, you know if you do sari design or anything if you want to have interesting patterns you could get from some of this information and do it. I am just translating and rotating the grids with respect to each other, I get nice play of patterns. And what you will have to look at is you have to develop this into an experimental technique for you to extract information. And like friction, Moire is a nuisance, friction is a nuisance in some application, friction is needed in braking, you need friction, without uh, friction you cannot have brakes. So, you do not want friction in certain applications where the IC engines you have this piston ring moves you want this to be as smooth as possible. And now you have another set of grid pattern where I have concentric circle and I relay and rot and when I move the both the grids I get different set of patterns. So, what you have here is this is called a grating and one is pasted onto the specimen and view it with the another one. So, you have a master grating and specimen grating. So, what we come here is if you look at this diagram very carefully compared to that this is a simulation where I have some control on what way I move the specimen grating and here the specimen grating is a checked pattern. I have reason for it because I have also mentioned in some applications I get only one information, in some application I will do one experiment I will try to get two information we will see that. And what you find here is this moves slightly, but I see a number of fringes. So, indirectly you can understand that it is some sort of a magnification effect that Moire helps you to measure. So, I want to measure very small de deformations and Moire helps better than the grid. And if I want to go for finer and finer information, I need to have finer and finer grids. So, Moire fringe spacings are fringes are spaced broadly indicating a magnifying effect to measure small deformations that cause the formation of these fringes. And if I want to improve the accuracy, I need to have finer and finer gratings that is what I want to do. So, if I have a finer grating, I have a better chance of measuring small deformation and what you have here is. I have two grids, I have this I call it as master grating, this attached to the specimen which is pulled because of Poisson ratio effect the, it, the thickness comes down and you see horizontal uh, you see horizontal fringes as well as vertical fringes. So, that means what you have to interpret horizontal fringes separately because we have always seen I have a grating whatever the fringes perpendicular to the grating direction you will uh, find out whether if the grating is aligned in x direction and you get the v displacement if the grating is aligned in the y direction you get the u displacement here i have a cross grating so i get simultaneously u and v displacement and you know strain is a tensor once i get displacement information i can also find out the slope that is nothing but the strain and if I want to strain tensor I need three information, 
people also have developed a grid at 45 degrees superimposed over that. And I also caution, you know, experimentalists when they develop the technique, they develop it and see what maximum information you can get out of it. But from a user point of view and data interpretation point of view, it is always better that you have one information at a time, okay, because you get much better information when you want to do that. So, the fineness of the grid spacing determines accuracy obtainable in Moire and that is what is shown here. And let us look at some uh, numbers. Okay. So, what you find is if you look at the Moire literature, the grid line spacing how fine it is was a very big challenge for scientists to develop. And when you think of Moire, you cannot forget the contributions by Daniel Post and his co-workers. They have developed the technique very well. And as the grading density is increased, I will also have to bring in diffraction effect for interpretation. So, what we find is grid you can easily analyze and I can have some grading, I can use just the geometric information and then interpret the fringes that is what you call the geometric moire. Suppose geometric moire we find the limitation for me to make finer measurement, I need to go in for finer number of uh, lines, then you find from optics point of view diffraction effects have to be brought in and do for interpretation. So, the interpretation becomes little involved as you go by. Fortunately, whatever the equation that you develop in geometric Moire is also equally applicable for Moire interferometry. And what we do is we decide this based on the lines per millimeter. If you have 40 lines per millimeter up to that you can interpret it based on geometric Moire principle and the result displacement resolution is of the order of 25 micrometer and 40 lines per millimeter is very fine that itself is very very fine it is not uh, you, you imagine you have millimeter is so small and within that you have 40 lines black and white lines. So, it is not uh, uh, something very high some uh, you it is very fine and you will have to be worried, worried about that. And what you can do is from Moire data strain has to be obtained by numerical differentiation. So, it is better that you go for Moire interferometry, where you have finer displacement measurement. Now, let me ask, suppose I want to measure 1 percent of strain, does 1 percent look uh, small or big? You go to a bank and ask for a loan, if he says 1 percent, you will definitely go and take the loan, because you find 1 percent is small. But it, uh, all the some of the smart banks, what they do is they may say one percent, but but one percent per month. That means twelve percent per year. Okay. On the other hand, if somebody gives you one percent as your uh, uh, interest for your investment, you will never put the money. One percent in strain analysis is it small or big? Some say small. Okay, it's not so it is a very huge value and what I want to caution here is I said that long time back I said the example of uh, somebody going to a doctor and then finding out whether 1 point 1 105 degree temperature is uh, small or big he should not refer an encyclopedia. And when you have difficulties in finding out the yield point which is not marked sharply then what you do is you have the offset method and then you locate the yield point on the curve, stress strain curve. I have an alloy steel which is pulled here and I have the stress strain data and this is what I have. I do not see very clearly the demarcation of uh, going from uh, elastic to plastic. It is very smooth. What is usually done is you draw an offset at 0.2 percent and 0.2 percent corresponds to 2000 micro strain. And what you have here is I have this, this as the proportional limit and this as the elastic limit and you have the yield strength. So, what you find is at 2000 micro strain the material has yielded, 
but you permit that for you to find out uh, what is the yield strength of the material when you are not able to accurately locate it in your stress strain curve. And many actual components they work under the you know I have uh, components interacting with one another and I cannot have launch strain. I have to live much below 2000 micro strain. So, typically you will live within 1000 micro strain or so, you will not cross that strain in many of your mechanical and aerospace uh, components where you have mating members and you cannot have large deformation there. So, 1 percent of strain looks small, but it is not small from strain analysis point of view, because at 0.2 percent of strain the material has yielded. So, many of these techniques you know you work only regions beyond yield. So, if I have to come and measure lower strain, then I have to improve my experimental refinement data acquisition and how do I do the experiment so on and so forth. And that is what is done, that is what is done in the case of uh, Moire. So, what you find here is strain sensitivity can be improved with high density gratings and what you find is 2400 lines per millimeter is now possible. It is the theoretical limit, people have achieved the theoretical limit by real hard work and with such high density grating I can measure 0.417 micrometer, but look at other thing if I have one fringe is 1 millimeter my the fringe spacing is 1 millimeter, the strain accuracy is only 417 micro strain. And I said we want to work much below 1000 micro strain. Okay. So, Moire interferometry has a limitation, it cannot go below a certain level. So, it is good for large deformation problems, it may not be good for small strain measurement, but certain specific applications the method of Moire is very, very good. So, that is where you know domain of application you have to find out. So, what you find here is the grating pitch of this high order has been used and like I said you have various photoelastic methods. I have geometric moire that is what you had seen in some of those uh, simple examples. Then you have several variations you have shadow moire, you have reflection moire, you have projection moire which cater to different field problems. And if you recall we had seen reflection moire has been used for finding out the curvature in the last class. And geometric moire is useful to find in plane as well as out of plane displacement and also slope in bending of plates. So, you have to use a particular kind of moire for a particular application, like you use reflection photoelasticity for the prototype analysis. You will also use if I want to find out outer plane displacement, I will go for geometric moire, I will go for shadow moire, and then if I want to find out uh, curvature or slope, I will have to use appropriate uh, moire method. And if I want to have finer and finer measurement, I will go for uh, moire interferometry, I can go for very small measurement of strain. And do you have any questions at this stage? Yeah. You have said it is used for large deformation, yes. significant, so it cannot be used for any elastic. elastic. We will see that later, I mean you know if you look at uh, IC chips, there are a lot of thermal stresses are developed. If you go and look at uh, any one of this electronic packaging, people have now uh, developed semiconductor technology to the extent you can pack as many transistors in a very, very small uh, place. But one of the challenging problem there is the heat generation, how the heat generation is dissipated. And people have done very interesting experimental approach using method of Moire to find out the stresses on the IC chips, the legs and all those electronic packaging components. If you want to look at that, Moire is the only technique which can reveal that. 
So, you have to select a technique for a given application. Now, you have digital image correlation, you have grid method, these are all for large deformation problems. But for small deformation, you have to use. If you are able to use a strain gauge, well and good, I can go up to 1 micro strain. But I cannot put a strain gauge on a, um, uh, the electronic packaging, because that is comparable in size. So, you will not do that. And if I want still finer measurement, I can go to holography and find out very small displacement. For nano mechanics, people use uh, holography uh, very well. So, there is nothing like one technique has to be patronized, other technique has to be dropped. For the problem on hand, which technique is ideal? That is one issue. Another issue is whether you have the facilities to do that. You may have a technique available in the literature, but you should also have facility, because experimental facilities are expensive. And you may want a design answer yesterday, okay. that is how industries come, they want result yesterday. When they come today, they want result yesterday. So, you have to solve the problem in a very shortest possible time. So, we will also discuss towards the end of this overview of experimental cis analysis, a detailed discussion on how do you go about selecting different techniques, very general guidelines. You may not have, there is nothing like one to one matching for you to find out the technique for a particular problem. You can have multiple techniques, so it depends on various factors. Thank you.